In today's macro photography tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to automate your focus stacking. I'll be taking some jewelry shots using our lighting and the new Slider Plus from MyOps. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today I want to take another look at some jewelry shots. Those of you that watch the channel fairly regularly know that I like to focus stack some of my shots and that I use a manual focusing rail for that. However, MyOps have kindly sent over one of their brand new Slider Plus systems, which apparently is quite good for automating your focus stacking. I'm going to unbox this, see what it's all about, and then we can get started with some photography. So then guys, if you don't actually count the lovely uh, soft case here, which is going to be really handy for packing the slider away and carrying it around, there's not a huge amount to actually unbox. We've got a couple of little cables down here, one for connecting to the camera and a little uh, USB cable here as well. Um, and then we've got the unit itself, which obviously consists of this sliding piece on the top where you can mount your camera and then the rail itself down here, uh, which can mount to tripod. So I've got my slider all set up and ready to go, and it's actually a really easy setup. Uh, there's not a lot of wires going on, there's nothing to put together. Uh, it's simply a case of getting it out of the box in its nice self-contained little package and choosing how to mount it. There are a couple of different adapters to mount it to different size tripod threads. Uh, so what I've done is actually mount it in between my tripod legs and the ball head from my tripod. So I've separated the two and moved the ball head and the camera on top of the slider. That's going to give me a few different creative options of where to angle my camera in relation to the direction of movement. I think that might give me a few options for video of my rings, um, but most importantly, it just means that I can experiment on what is the best way to photograph my rings uh, from different angles. Once you've got all of that done and you've got your slider all set up, uh, it's just a case of um, connecting it via Bluetooth to your phone and then you can program in all sorts of different movements. So this is probably the most simple movement here, all the way back, all the way forward, uh, which would be really good for some nice video uh, flying over your jewellery perhaps. Um, but it can do a lot more complex uh, movements that are all programmable and directly controllable in the app. Obviously, focus stacking with the various steps and triggering the camera along the way is going to be a little bit more complex. So let's take a look at the app and how we can program that in, and then we can take some photographs. So I've connected my phone via Bluetooth to the slider, and this is using the MyOps mobile app, which is actually a beta version of the app, which includes some of the features for the slider that are slowly being integrated into this app from the Capsule 360 app uh, for some of MyOps's other programmable products. But what we've got here is lots of um, different types of modes to program our slider. So you can see that we've got time-lapse modes, uh, we've got some video modes so that we can push a video through our scene nice and smoothly. Uh, but the one that we're interested in today is of course the focus stacking mode. Once we get into this mode, we can see the parameters that we need to set in order to get our focus stack just the way we want it. The first thing that we need to do is set a start and an end point for our focus stack. That's using these A and B buttons here, so uh, we can move the slider back to uh, preview what the closest point of our focus stack is going to look like, and we can change our focus there, and then we can move to point A and make sure that that's deep enough into our scene to uh, be able to get everything that we want in focus. Once we've got those two points set, we can go to uh, further settings to say how many photographs do we want to take. So this is set to take 10 photographs. The total movement is going to be 3.3 centimeters. You can see all of this information at the bottom of the app. I find that really handy. 3.3 centimeters, I can see looking at my subject, it's just about enough to cover that entire ring. Uh, once you've got all of these set, including how uh, often you want to take your photographs, you can set how uh, quickly you want to take your photographs. So a five second interval between each photograph will allow our camera to settle from the movement of the slider each shot. 
Once all of that is set and you're happy and confident that uh, the slider is going to do what you want it to do, you can just hit go and take a step back. The slider will then slowly start to move all the way through your scene, taking photographs automatically as it goes. You can see how much time we've got left in our stack. So this is going to be done in just 40 seconds with these 10 photographs. And I can see the slider moving slowly through my scene, uh, which is really nice to see. And I can go and do something else. If this were a longer focus stack, maybe hundreds of images, that would take a very long time uh, and a lot of concentration with a manual focus stack. Believe me, I've done it. Uh, but for something like this, it's really easy to just set it going and see the results at the end. Now that I've got my new toy set up and figured out, it's time to start thinking about our photographs. The ring that we've been looking at so far is pretty plain without any uh, extra lighting, um, but we've got a few things that we can try and we've got a few ways to improve our ring shot and really make it stand out. Of course, I've got a few different rings to try, including a black ceramic wireless payment ring. I've got my wife's wedding ring and uh, engagement ring, and I've got my wedding ring as well, just stainless steel. But it should look interesting on our various backdrops as well. We've got some, um, some concrete here, we've got a couple of pieces of wood and bark, and of course the igneous rock here, um, all of which should provide a nice contrast to the shiny surfaces of our jewellery. These are simply going to be uh, placed onto our uh, pieces of backdrop and finding interesting ways to pose your rings is really half the battle. Once you've got a shot that you like, it's time to think about your lighting. Lighting for ring and jewellery photographs can often be a little bit daunting. Um, because it's really tricky to find the right spot for your lighting and the reflections on the gold and silver bands can lead to you losing all of the detail from blown out highlights. Uh, maybe you've been using big uh, soft boxes or a generic product enclosure or something like that and you're just not finding the right control over your light to, uh, to be able to get the results that you're looking for. That's where something like the Adapts Look Studio can really come in handy. These are flexible lighting arms plugged into a control pod here, and we can change the brightness and uh, move all of our lights individually to exactly where we need them to be. You can also add colors and uh, diffusion to change the way your light is falling on your subject. So there's a lot of control in a system like this. I'm going to implement the Adapt Look Studio here on a little mini tripod and point it at some of my rings, bringing some light around the front and perhaps introducing a little bit of colour to catch the eye and draw the attention to those gold and silver bands. So as you can see, I've been playing around with my lighting a little bit, uh, bringing in different lighting arms and adding different colour filters uh, for different effects and vibes to my images. I'm not trying to go for those really representative, clean looking um, jewellery shots that you might find on a jewellery website, um, but what I am trying to do is catch the viewer's eye, adding a little dash of colour into the highlights along the back of a ring, or just um, adding a little bit of colour into the background uh, of the wood, I think is a really interesting way just to uh, make your photographs stand out a little bit more. Now, of course, all of this would work just as well for the those um, clinical white background shots and especially with the stacking provided by um, the Myop slider you can get really sharp images and really show off your jewellery in its finest detail. I'm going to keep playing around a little bit longer, uh, try out a few different combinations of rings and backgrounds. Uh, I really like the gold rings on the darker stone backgrounds and the silver rings on uh, the lighter wood backgrounds, um, but the lighting makes all the difference, bringing in a couple of white lighting arms from the front and of course uh, adding a dash of colour if you want to as well. And adjusting all of these individually makes a world of difference compared to uh, just bringing in a giant softbox and blasting everything out. Uh, there's a lot of fine tuning to do for each photograph, so I'm going to keep going off camera and take a look at some of the stacked results in a moment.
I've been processing everything in Helicon Focus, which is a really great application, uh, but most importantly, it really likes everything to be equally spaced and in sequence, which brings us back to our slider. Because all of those micron increments are set in the app, everything is quite precisely measured. Uh, usually when I'm doing it manually, I'm just sort of eyeballing it or trying to turn a quarter turn every time uh, to try and space things properly. But this means that everything is uh, quite accurate. When you process it through Helicon Focus, I'm getting much better results uh, for my jewelry. And if you've not been focus stacking your jewelry, you're really missing out on a lot of detail and a lot of extra editing uh, opportunities. Zooming right in and having everything in focus is uh, really a bonus when it comes to jewelry photography. I think my first venture into automatic focus stacking has gone pretty well. I don't think my um, jewelry photographs are going to be anything earth shattering, but I'm not generally a, a jewelry enthusiast or jewelry photographer. Um, but for the demonstration of the uh, Adapt Look Studio and trying out the uh, Myops Slider Plus system, I think it's gone pretty well and I'm really happy with the results. It did make it an absolute breeze to light and to stack these photographs, so I'm definitely going to be using these two systems in tandem together in the future. If you'd like some more information on how to focus stack manually and how to process these stacks through Helicon Focus, I will link to uh, another video up in the right hand corner of your screen now. I'd like to know what you th thought to my uh, jewellery photography today and whether you'd like to see some more in-depth tutorials covering subjects like this. Hit the subscribe button for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. But for now, that's all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.